Today's date is February the 24th, 1994. I'm Blake Haley and we're making this uh, oral history interview in the Biomed Communications Department of the Gibson D. Lewis Library at the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth. And today we're going to spend a little time with Mr. Mike Ferguson, the Vice President for Fiscal and Administrative uh, Affairs here at the Health Science Center. Ms. Ferguson, thanks for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to meet with us this morning. Blake, I'm glad to do what I can here and provide any information that I might. So. Well, I know you're going to provide a lot of good information for us today. If I could, could we go back and talk about a little of your prior history before you even considered coming to TCOM? It's always kind of interesting to have a little background. Uh, Okay. Prior to coming to TCOM, I worked at the State Auditor's Office for 22 to 23 years. I started out with the State Auditor's Office and the auditing just regular state agencies and licensing boards and river authorities. But the last 13 years that I was with the Auditor's Office, I was what we referred to as an audit manager over institutions of higher education. So the last years that uh, I was with the auditor's office. My time was spent dealing with uh, people in higher education and, and reviewing the audits and so forth, of which the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine was one of the audits that I had oversaw during that time period. And the, go ahead. <clears throat> I was going to say the, uh, and I was aware of the search that was going on for a vice president here. I had not applied for the job at the time. Uh, as I understand, they had gone through the search process and had come up with a couple of candidates that n did not work out. So they extended the uh, search and one of the people on the search committee, Phil Diebel, who was the mm -hmm. vice president up at North Texas the University and uh, <clears throat> gave me a call one day at work and asked me if I would consider applying for this job and I said well I would need to go home and at least discuss it with my wife and uh, so I did that that night uh, we thought well why not let's at least uh, talk and so I submitted an application and things worked out that I came up here. So. Did you start in the role that you're in now at uh, TCOM back in, I believe it was, what, 80, 86? 86, August the 1st, 1986. I became the Vice President for Fiscal Administrative Affairs for the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. At that time, were there any events that you can recall or things like that that reflected some support for TCOM becoming the UNT Health Science Center at a later point? I think back in those days, maybe that was a dream that people here may have had, but there probably was little support or initiative at that time to us becoming a health science center. I know even then when we would look at things like the cost per student and uh, you know the space mm -hmm. allocation and so forth, that we felt like we did not have a level playing field when we were compared to health science centers that had other programs. And usually we would be on the high end of those uh, uh, calculations as people would, you know, look at that. And so the thought process was there. And I guess the dream that at some point in time, you know, that we would become a health science center, but we knew also that there had to be other programs. Now, we had the graduate program at that time through an interagency contract with North Texas, and we felt like that that would be the thing that might help bring us to, into the health science center if, you know, we could ever get authorization to uh, do those ourselves. What were some of the decisions and choices that you had to make when the actual process started in regards to your position? And just when I came here at mm -hmm. the school, some of the things that we went through. Mm -hmm. And then the, the uh, Health Science Center progressed. Uh, the school had gone through some very difficult times prior to my coming here. I think the uh, they had just established a new president here at the school. Uh, the, my previous position had left 
under, uh, I guess, not real desirable uh, circumstances. <laughs> And the financial position of the school overall, the local funds and so forth, had almost been deleted or depleted maybe. And uh, <clears throat> so one of the things that I felt like we needed to do was kind of establish some internal controls over our process, uh, bring in maybe some you know good people in some vacant positions that we had. We had several key areas that uh, had been vacant for several months. And so just recruiting the right people, I think, and bringing them in and establishing some c controls over you know, our fiscal uh, system and so forth, I think, was one of the first things that we had to do. Were there some things that happened as you progressed along in the process, uh, to, as the process began for it to become a health science center, or did you have to <coughs> stay on that same track? Uh, we, I guess, continued on the same track. There were a lot of things that we needed to enhance. Uh, computing, for example, was one. Uh, back at that time, as, as we currently do now, we handled most of our computing with the University of North Texas. But also, we had not received all the upgrades here at uh, the Health Science Center or, or TCOM at that time that they had implemented at the University of North Texas. So one of the first things that we did was try to enhance our computing and at least get up to the same standard that they were at at the university. I think we have continued to look and assess our needs across the institution and one of the areas that we've identified that we need to continue to improve and maybe go even a step further in bringing in a new system is in the computing and we have taken steps this past year to implement the banner system within the Health Science Center. This would give us for the first time a fully, once all the parts are uh, in place, a fully integrated system from student records to financial to uh, payroll personnel to alumni development and also financial aid. Why do you uh, think it was necessary for the growth of TCOM to become a health science center. Do you think that was a, an important idea? Uh, yes, I do. I think as we look and as we're compared to the other health science centers across the state, uh, if we're not, don't have a, kind of a same programs and equal opportunities that they have, I think we would always come up short. One of the things that the state is looking at at this point in time is to develop funding on a performance measure. Could you explain a little of that? And the performance measures, as they are at least uh, submitted at this point in time, would kind of make each institution compete in total against all other institutions. And just as an example, they would measure the number of students that came into the program and the number of students that exited the program, graduated. Uh, they were they're currently, they're looking at the students that do a lot of uh, patient indigent care services, a lot of research. Uh, there are some institutions within the state that do those and do them very well. They are affiliated with uh, community hospitals where they carry a lot of uh, indigent care through their programs. They do a tremendous amount of research. And we're not at that level yet. We do not have an affiliation with the community hospital. And therefore, our indigent care would be much less than, say, the Southwestern in Dallas. But if we had to compare the amount of indigent care or if our funding was based on the amount of indigent care that we provided compared to the amount that Southwestern provided, we would always come up on the short end. And, uh, you know, and here again, I think the becoming a health science center is our first step at maybe equalizing some of the opportunities uh, through leveling out the playing field. How is it coming along with the situation of getting any community hospital? Do you have any idea on that? Uh how we're progressing toward that? There's been some progress made. Uh, we now have uh, a few of our faculty that's, you know, on the staff at the John Peter Smith Hospital. There's some opportunities for us to 
uh, have some additional faculty that will be on staff there. Uh, it's progressing maybe not as rapidly as we would like, but at least we're making some headway for the first time, I guess, in many years. So I'd have to say at least we've, uh, you know, opened that door and that now we are proceeding to, uh, you know, see how that can help us. I would say another example that could be uh, uh, help in this manner would be the federal prison system that will be taking over the hospital out at Carswell. Oh. If we develop and obtain the contract for that, this here again would be one of the first uh, kind of public hospitals or where the hospital would be providing all the uh, support staff and so forth and we would just be providing the medical staff and that would be a big boost in our patient volume as well as our revenue flow within our practice plan. So there are a couple avenues in that, that, that the Health Science Center can pursue to get into a, a well, community or public hospital. Right, and one of the things that Dr. Richards and Dr. Cohen uh, have done here along with uh, other people within Tarrant County is they've developed a consortium which involves not only the Health Science Center and the Community Hospital, JPS, but it also involves the Harris Hospital, University of North Texas, and Southwestern Medical School in Dallas. And so for the first time, we have several of the players that uh, are involved in the health care within Tarrant County here at the same table. And I think this will also open up some opportunities for the University of North Texas Health Science Center in the future. So we do have a lot of good opportunities coming our way. It just takes a little time to, to get where we need to be. Why do you think at the time the initiative went through, why was it the right time? Do you think there could have been a, a you know, better time or was that just the right moment to do this? I think it was the right time for us. Uh, one of the factors I think that brought this about, the coordinating board was looking at the graduate programs through the University of North Texas and they had come down here and re were reviewing the programs and so forth and I think they were favorably impressed with the quality of the programs but they also felt like that maybe it was time for those programs to be offered directly by the school here in, in Fort Worth. So I think that just provided the avenue for us to approach the legislature with and say that hey, you know, it is time for us to merge into a health science center and give us the opportunity to offer more of our own programs here. And uh, I think it just is the timing and everything worked out, it went through. The, I guess the reverse of that on the timing would be this was also a time that the legislature was looking at new initiatives in South Texas and since we were in the North Texas region of the state, it's they were kind of developing a new, um, kind of an institution here for new programs and so forth when their main emphasis was on, on South Texas. But I think that the legislature also felt like that we, the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, was doing the right things that were beneficial to the state and so I think there was support in the legislature even in the time that their emphasis on South Texas to go ahead and, and make us a health science center. You kind of mentioned that uh, the right time and all, and a few things in the back uh, about other health science centers. Do you see this being a different health science center from, uh, for example, UT or an A&M health science center? Uh, I think we are different. To start with, we're the only DO uh, medical program in the state. All of the other health science centers within the state are the allopathic or the MD programs. Uh, they all have their individual missions. Uh, our primary mission, we feel like, is to produce primary care doctors that will serve in rural areas within the state. Uh, most of the other health science centers have emphasis more on uh, specialty care as well as a larger uh, emphasis on research and, and other programs. And here again, a uniqueness about our program is as I mentioned previously, is that we have not had a, an affiliation with a county or public hospital where we have had to 
you know, assist in taking care of a lot of the indigent care. Now, while we do provide indigent care, it is not to the magnitude that we would if we had a full affiliation with the uh, community hospital. So basically, we have had to generate our own patient volume a lot more so than some of the other health science centers have, where they've had that, you know, kind of mm -hmm. direct uh, influx of uh, patient volume through the county. But it sounds like we're coming up in that respect, and you know, we really right. have a lot of that already covered. Then we've we've done a lot of work in that direction. Uh, we still need to do a lot more, I think. Uh, but I think there are people here, Dr. Richards, Dr. Coyne, who are making a strong effort to you know address those issues and help to bring some of those things about. What were some of the concerns and decisions that you had to make? to help this proposal along uh, on the uh, fiscal administrative end? I guess the big thing or from the, you know, the fiscal administrative was just kind of to show the support that we did want to do the right things. You know, we've got our uh, uh, fiscal administrative affairs in order and that we were in a position that we could you know, take on the additional responsibilities and the new programs and so forth and be able to handle those well. I think the main emphasis would come from people like Dr. Richards and Danny Jensen as they work with the legislature and kind of sold the uh, you know, proposal to them and what, what it meant to us as an institution. Are there some concerns now that we're a health science center and progressing in that regard? Uh, are there some other concerns you have concerning the fiscal administrative as we move into the next few years? I think one of the key things for us from the uh, you know, fiscal administrative areas is to make sure that we have the support programs in place that can handle uh, the increasing needs that will be coming about in the future, even with the changes in, at the national level with the health care and so forth. I think we're going to see more and more uh, uh, information that's going to be required, more uh, opportunities where we have to quickly come up with uh, data to see how we can, uh, you know, fit into a particular situation and so forth. And I think the one of the key elements for us will be the upgrading of our computing here at the Health Science Center. And the other thing would be just to make sure that we continue to provide the support staff, you know, to handle the increased workloads and so forth and that we need to continue to be as efficient as we can and to maximize through computing or whatever means on, uh, you know, to be as efficient in handling the, uh, um, you know, just uh, the transactions and so forth here at the Health Science Center as best we can. Because I don't see a large influx of state dollars mm -hmm. coming to the Health Science Center in the near future. I think the state will continue to experience some very difficult budget times uh, there will, until the state realizes that they have to come up with new revenue sources. I think we will continue to struggle for the state dollars with all the other uh, state needs within. What is the funding right now? Uh, since there is a problem, how much of our funding comes from the state? and? How much do you look at having to get outside of uh, a state funding? Currently, about two thirds of our budget comes from state funds, and the remaining third comes is from the practice plan revenues, uh, some student fees, research gifts, and grants. In uh, comparing this to most of the other health science centers, that's about reversed. Uh, probably 25% to a third of their budget comes from state funds. And the majority of it then comes from, you know, either their practice plan or their research efforts and so forth. So when the state resources are tight, they affect us much more so than they affect the other health science centers because they have such a much larger source of external funding, you know, other than the state resources. So what we need to do is continue to build a practice plan, continue to increase our research efforts, and also to develop opportunities through our development office on uh, gifts and, you know, that can help support the institution. 
Uh, we need cheers. Right now we have no cheers within the institution that provide endowment funds for the departmental operations and so forth. And we need to continue to develop our uh, you know, private funding and institutional funding through those avenues. So you, do you see the state then decreasing our funds as time goes on and us having to, like other medical schools, look for that other 75% or so from outside? Within the I think we will have to continue to do that. And I don't know that the state will decrease our revenues, but for us, for our budget to grow in the proportion that it needs to, I think the other revenues will have to grow at a faster pace than what the state revenues are. And our budget right now, for example, the Texas Tech University Health Science Center that took on about the same number of medical students that we do, their budget is twice the size of ours. Twice the size? That is correct. So we need to develop, you know, our internal programs and also be able to, uh, uh, you know, develop external funding sources and so forth so that we will be you know able to compete in in our programs on an equal footing with the other health science centers so there's a lot of work that needs to be done outside of the state budget to get ours up with the say the level of a te of texas tech that is correct of, you have, you, have you ever thought of any ideas that you could give to development that might help in that respect well of course we've just you know, instituted a new program here. Mike Davenport has come on as our development officer. I think he's putting things together. And we also realize that a lot of the development activity is not, you do not get immediate results. A lot of the efforts that are being made now through, you know, maybe people leaving funds to us in their wills and so forth, we won't realize that until some time in the future. Although I think he also has done some things that has helped some through the foundation and so forth to get funds on a more current basis. But we need to continue in those efforts and, and just to allow him the time that it will take to, to develop some things there. Are there some other steps that you need to take on uh, your position to, as the Health Science Center advances along that you haven't already mentioned? I think the you know key for us in the future is to stay on top of the increasing workload, seeing how we can continue to administer our duties and responsibilities. As I mentioned previously, I don't see a large influx in the state appropriations that will be coming to us that will allow us to increase the numbers of people that we have. And I think the key for us at this time in the institution's life is to become more efficient. Although I think our staff has done a good job of that, I think we have to continue to look at ways in which we can do our job uh, better and, and less costly. What is this, I'm just out of sheer curiosity, what, uh, do you happen to know the number of the staff that uh, support staff here at the Health Science Center? Mm -hmm. I don't know offhand. I would assume the support staff would be somewhere around 200 employees oh my. on my side of that. That's quite a, quite a number of them. There's a, a $10 million bond proposal that is, I guess, in the future, or that you are looking at for the future. Is that one of the future projects you're working on, and where yes. will that go? The, the legislature in this last legislative session authorized us to issue $10 million in tuition revenue bonds. And so we would pledge the tuition that we collect from our students to retire those revenue bonds. And the state has appropriated funds to make up that difference in our operating budget. Those monies were given to us, or that authorization was given to us, so that we would have the opportunity to increase the space needs that we have here at the institution. Our first thought on how to utilize those funds would be to add two floors to MedEd 2. We have a committee that's in the process of looking at what our needs are here. We also have hired some outside consultants that are helping us look at how we're currently utilizing our space and how we compare it to kind of the norm at the national level and some of the other health science centers and to provide some guidance for us on what would be the best direction for us to go at this time. 
ultimately we will need to get a master plan, would have an architect or someone that would come in and look at our campus. We would have to provide them with what future programs we anticipate having, uh, the number of students that we would anticipate in those programs, the additional faculty and support staff that would be necessary, and develop a master plan for our overall campus. And that should be one of the things that will need to be done at the latter part of this year, or at least initiate the latter part of this year and, and finalize maybe in the beginning of the following fiscal year. So it'll be about another two years before you can get some of these changes underway then in, in the future? It would be uh, sometime in the future, even to add two floors to MedEd 2, if we started on that, say, the latter part of this year or early next year, it would probably take two years or 18 months oh to my. construct that. So whatever we do, it's, you know, it's going to take a significant time period for us to accomplish and, and add that space to our institution. Are there some other things in the works for the future that uh, you're aware of? Well, I know they're looking at some public health programs, uh, allied health programs, seeing what opportunities that might be there. And of course, before we can offer any new programs, uh, we would have to go to the coordinating board and get their approval. And to also offer these programs, the coordinating board has as one of their requirements that we have to provide uh, institutional funding that would re not require state funding for those programs for the first two years. And we also could only get state support at, up to high for the funding of those programs for the next two years. So even to develop new programs, we also have to develop a funding source to support those programs. And that would be you know, part of the things that we need to be working on within the next couple of years. So like the grants and the grants developments and all that right, kind of? the development area, you know, or through private gifts and grants. So some of these things are uh, in the works, but of course it just takes a few years to get the money together and the accre accreditation and all that. So I guess this Something just can't happen overnight. You were looking That's at two correct. or three years. That's correct. And as I heard someone compare it, uh, you know, a lot of things in changing and reshaping, uh, you know, an institution in higher education is like a, a large ship on the ocean. It takes a lot of room and time and space to turn it or to change directions. And so I think that would apply for the institution. It, it will take time and energies and efforts for us to, you know, expand and, and turn the uh, institution in, in different directions and so forth. I know that that's a good analogy. It seems like it'd be nice if this could all just happen overnight. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, does I can see your point. It definitely does take time and money and it's slow and probably painful process. Sometimes you probably see things move faster. I think you know, anytime you have change, I think there is a certain amount of. Uh, maybe resistance or, you know, just reluctance on people's part. I guess it's just human nature, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have some reluctance to change. We, we're comfortable maybe in the way that we do things. But I think to survive and to really be <clears throat> a viable uh, player that we have to change. And I think any institution that doesn't change will ultimately not be a player in the uh, medical field and so forth. I guess that would apply then to any university would probably not be a player if they didn't want to make major changes. I think that's correct. I think we're going to see that we're going to have to do a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of things that we currently do, we're going to have to find different ways in which to do them in the future. Your role here since 86 has, sounds like it has changed uh, over, the over time. Where do you see, uh, what other changes do you see happening with what you're doing is, uh, in your personal job? What changes are going to be happening in the next few years? Or is it going to stay about like it has and move along? I think the, you know, the big change will be the continuing efforts that we'll need to make and look for additional funding, uh, working with the legislature and providing uh, you know, the information and data that they need. One of the, the things that a lot of people do not realize is the amount of information that an institution has to provide to other agencies, you know, such as the coordinating board, the legislative budget board, the state auditor's office, 
as well as granting agencies and so forth. There was a review done of the reports that institutions have to do and present to outside agencies, and I think it was close to 200 reports per year, and some of those reports had to be presented more than once during the year, and I think when you looked at the number of times that reports had to be sent out, it was between four and 500. So there's a tremendous amount of information that has to flow in and out of the institution. And I think one of our biggest challenges will be to be in a position to be able to continue to, to provide that information accurately and timely to those requesting agencies. My gosh, there are quite a few. There's a lot of paperwork that's generated throughout the year. A lot of paperwork. Year. A lot of that is done through uh, computer tapes and disks now also. And I think that's another thing that not only we, but the state and agencies overall have to look at how is the best way to transmit this information and data. The state has just implemented, for example, a statewide accounting system. Mm -hmm. They're also in the process of implementing a statewide payroll system where they would gather all of this information in a central location in Austin so that they could generate maybe a lot of the reports that we are currently having to prepare and send information. So would that take a little bit of the workload off of you and maybe hopefully make things a little easier for you? Well, it could, <laughs> but at this point it hasn't. The only thing it's done to date is created additional work and so forth. But maybe at some point in the future when these programs are perfected that uh, there, it does have the possibility to reduce some of the reporting and outside uh, data information that we have to send, that they can provide that, that information. So you're, oh, go ahead. And I was going to say, but the other side of that, we just have to make sure that the information that they then in turn provide, that it is accurate and that we're aware of it and, and also on the manner in which they provide it so that we know when the questions or the data comes back to us, you know, what, what they're basing it on and so forth. So you're constantly having to keep up then with these uh, changes in the technology, so to speak, Correct. working with that. Mr. Ferguson, we've covered a lot of a lot of ground here today uh, in regards to what you do and your views on the Health Science Center and where you see it going. Are there some things that we, uh, I'm sure we missed, I missed somewhere in asking questions for you? Are there some things you'd like to bring up? Well, I just think that we have, uh, you know, a lot of new challenges for us in the future. Uh, there's a lot of effort and work that needs to be done. I think the staff and I have to commend my staff because they're the ones that really do the the work and, and get the information together and out, pay our bills, get our payrolls out on time and so forth. And uh, we just need to continue to be aware of the workloads, I think, with through the institution. As we grow, we have to make sure that we continue to provide the support staff that meets the needs. As we increase the research, for example, that increases the paperwork through purchasing, through accounting, the bills, and everything else. And uh, it's just, I just see that the future looks pretty bright, I think, for the institution here. Or at least we have the opportunities, and depending on how, what we make of those opportunities will determine the outcome of this institution. And it sounds like you were planning to be a part of it for a number of years to come then. Well, I think we all have an opportunity to, you know, make an impact on what we do here. And I think in turn we'll make an impact on the state of Texas in providing the needs for the populace of our state. Well, Mr. Ferguson, I do appreciate you taking time out. I know that your comments will be valuable for a long time to come and do appreciate, you know, again, you're taking your time. You've been a, a I know, a big help to the institution and will continue to be so even as your role changes and hopefully maybe a little easier in some respects, but uh, you've been a big help and I know we'll continue to do so. Thank you again for meeting with us this morning. Okay, Blake, and thank you for taking this time to you know bring this information together and I'm sure that what you're doing will be a benefit to the Health Science Center in gathering this data for us in the future. Well, I know that all these comments will be used later, and again, very helpful. Thank you very much.
And that will conclude uh, this interview. Thank you and have a nice day. All right.